Well, they finally did it, guys. We talked about them possibly removing the dislike button, but it looks like YouTube has officially decided that starting today, the dislike count is completely removed. You no longer have the ability to see how disliked a video is. This has to be one of the most unpopular moves YouTube has made in a while, but ironically, we don't know exactly how unpopular it is. Now let's bring down the board and show you exactly what they said to know exactly what their plan is. Team YouTube, to reduce targeted dislike attacks and their impact on creators, especially on smaller creators, <laughs> like YouTube cares about smaller creators, you'll no longer see a public dislike count on YouTube starting today. The dislike button is staying. Guys, you can smash it. It just doesn't do anything. This comes after lots of research, testing, and consideration. Now we're gonna watch this video together, but let me say up front, I think this is a pretty calculated way to kind of just maximize views. Listen guys, there's no longer such a thing as a, a bad take or a bad person. We're letting the entire world upload, but there's nobody bad on this platform. It's all positivity all the time. And you know what you get when you get more positivity? More ads more purchases, more sales, guys. Give it up for the advertising side of YouTube. They're about to see a little bump. I think that's where the research team um, did the most homework, but we're also going to take them seriously on this idea of it's all to help smaller creators. Gonna give that a shot too. So let's pull up uh, this video. This is hosted by Matt Koval. Don't harass him. He's a nice guy. I think he just uh, sort of a shoot the messenger kind of situation. They, they shove the nicest guy they have out there to give us the bad news. Let's watch together. Hey folks, you may have seen a while back that YouTube announced it was experimenting with making dislike counts private to only the creator of the video. Now, if you're like me, you were surprised by that. I mean, I've always thought seeing the number of dislikes on a video helps us know as viewers if it's a good video or not, if it's a helpful tutorial or not, or if what a creator is, is saying in their video is generally agreed with or not. That is what the dislike button is for. Okay, to be clear, remember what he just said. Actually, I'm glad he brought this up. The dislike button is so at a glance, because this is a social network where anybody can upload, you know at a glance, should I be watching this video? Is it good? Is it agreed with? What does the community think? That's what the dislike button is great at doing. So he says that right up front and he says, look, this is, I thought this is what it was for. And then get ready for the gaslight, guys. Here we go. But unfortunately, research teams at YouTube have found there's this whole other use for disliking a video that I had never experienced as a creator and you may not have either. Apparently groups of viewers are targeting a video's dislike button to drive up the count, turning it into something like a, a, a game with a visible scoreboard. And it's usually just because they don't like the creator or what they stand for. Okay. So now we're told there's this other side to dislike buttons. And this is definitely true, right? This is, we all know this is true, but sometimes this is to do what he said at the beginning, which is to show that people don't agree with what that person is saying. And I think they should have the ability to do that. Or they say, look, it's a way of saying this creator has done terrible things in the past. We don't like them. Now, YouTube's gonna say, look, we need to protect creators. And that's fair enough. That's why you have the ability to turn off the like to dislike ratio, ladies and gentlemen. This is a problem that has already been solved, but YouTube says they've looked into this and there's a big problem here. Team YouTube says this was already an option for creators, but we've seen that when creators choose to turn off likes, dislikes, they can be bullied and harassed for their decision. Ultimately, it's YouTube's responsibility to protect its community. So we've made this change across all videos. So if we just make everyone not have dislikes, no one will know the people who are choosing to hide the dissent. Now, this is really stupid and I'm going to explain why. You could make the exact same argument for comments, right? Comments are another common way people express that they do not like what is being said or they do not like the video. Creators have the ability to turn off their comments and when they turn off their comments, they are frequently um, harassed or made fun of for hiding dissent again. So is YouTube's response to that going to be to remove all comments? because of the fact that a few creators who are trying to remove the comment section are getting harassed for doing so? Is that their response 
to all problems is that if anyone ever gets harassed or bullied or there are negative comments, we must remove it totally from the platform. Because if that's the case, comments are next, boys. Comments are next. Because again, creators, you could just replace likes to dislikes with comments here. Creators choose to turn off comments. They can be bullied and harassed for their decision. Ultimately, we've made the decision to remove this completely, right? This is the exact same thing for comments, so it makes no sense. You've already built a way for creators to remove likes and dislikes and comments. You are now just saying, well, the audience can't know whether the creator is trying to hide anything now. We've got to give them the ability to hide that they're hiding. And that comes per the crack team of researchers at YouTube, their research. We're going to get into that because this is where I absolutely lost my mind. So earlier in 2021, YouTube experimented with making the public dislike count private to see if it would help reduce these coordinated dislike attacks across the platform. And after analysis, they did see a reduction. Wow, the crack team of researchers at YouTube found that when they removed the dislike count, people didn't bother to dislike the video. Incredible stuff. Let's see what else the research team found. So the update from YouTube is that the dislike button is staying but the dislike counts will now be private. You can still dislike videos and that action will be used to tune your own recommendations, but you won't be able to see the dislike count. Only the creator can find it on the back end if they want. Now, a few common questions we saw from the initial experiment. First, without a public dislike count, how can viewers tell if a video is worth watching? Again, I kind of have this question too, but it turns out that while Viewers might use the dislike count to give them a sense of a video's worth. When the teams looked at the data across millions of viewers and videos in the experiment, they didn't see a noticeable difference in viewership. Cap, okay, I'm gonna call Cap on that one. I was all with your uh, team of genius researchers up until this moment. What this, think about what this man just said. This is such garbage, okay? What they're saying is that if you see a ton of dislikes, everyone just watches the video again still. Okay. That's because people react to dislikes differently given the video. Here's the thing that drives me the most crazy is the best use of the dislike button is for things like tutorials and things like where you're not sure of a video's quality. If I see that it's like a very high dislike ratio, I just click off because I just know it's, oh, it's not useful, right? To the mass amount of people. I have like a Windows bug, right? Because Windows is complete trash. And I go try to find a solution. If I click on it and there's a huge dislike ratio, I know I don't have to waste my time. Now I don't even know that anymore. What their researchers are seeing, I could have told you, which is that for popular creators, for big creators, if there's a high dislike ratio, people end up usually watching because they want to know what the controversy was. But that's not the only reason people use dislikes as a measure of like whether a video should be watched or not. This is so frustrating because I know what happened. In their big experiment, the biggest creators with the most dislikes carried the data, right? Whereas the tutorial watching, stuff like that, where people use dislikes as a measure of should I watch the video or not? Is this going to be useful or not? Just got, I guess, discounted by this whole team of researchers. This is absolutely wrong. And the fact that YouTube is trying to pretend, well, our researchers looked into it and there's there's nothing in the data, shows me they aren't looking. They maybe had a pre-existing you know, decision that that's what they were gonna do. And they decided they're going to find the data and torture the data until they prove it, right? There's no way you can tell me that a highly disliked video, if it's a tutorial or something of that nature, is going to be watched the same as something with like 100% likes. It's absolutely not true. And it pisses me off that we're just supposed to believe the internal research of YouTube. Ah, uh, guys, just believe it. Did you publish it? Believe it. Hey, we, we did the research. We know it's best. It's such a weird gaslight for YouTube to be like, well, look, we looked into it. I know this is unpopular with like all our creators, but we're gonna remove the dislike, so. <laughs> so you can't even tell how unpopular it is. This is where they really lost me with this uh, research team. Regardless of whether they could see the dislike count or not. In other words, it didn't really matter if a video had a lot of dislikes or not, they still watched. Next common question. If creators can still see the dislike count on the back end, how's that any different? 
They can see it if they look for it inside Studio Analytics under the Engagement tab. But overall, it's much less likely to cause stress and embarrassment if the count isn't visible to the public. Again, to react to this real quick, sometimes stress and embarrassment is okay. Listen, I'm not saying that creator harassment is fine or whatever, but if you do something genuinely bad, you should have to face some kind of consequence for that from your audience, right? Otherwise, this isn't a social platform. It, it, it's a uh, back padding platform, right? Because basically what they're saying is your feedback is only wanted if it's positive. We have no room anymore on YouTube for negative things. And what always kills me about this stuff is platforms like this, they, they understand that positivity sells better than negativity. So they want to, they have an incentive to uh, encourage only positivity. But the funny thing is, is encouraging positivity doesn't end bad things. Discouraging calling out bad things doesn't breed more good things. In fact, it just gives people cover to do the bad things and not face any kind of accountability. You know, it's funny, YouTube wants to be able to decide who and who cannot post on their platform, right? They have their own guides, guidelines, etc. But the second that a community itself says, hey, we don't like this thing, YouTube has to come and step in and go, whoa, 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 guys. We gotta make this a safe space for everybody while also deciding who can and cannot post on their platform. This seems to me to be the opposite of like a, hey, broadcast yourself mentality. If it truly is a social platform, you should have the platform let people post and then the audience react to the postings. But they seem to want to control everything, which they're doing a terrible job of. Because this is the thing that really set me off. Because obviously, I didn't want to make this all about what I do. But obviously, one of the big things this is going to affect is how many people scam and get away with it, right? Because there's going to be no way for an audience to signal, hey, this, this is bad. This is a bad video. This is a scam. This is whatever. As this person says it, uh, Robux scam streams, Fortnite scam streams, life scam streams, lol. Hiding dislikes is a nightmare. YouTube comes in, says, big sigh scams are not allowed on YouTube. So this isn't the experience we want you or anyone to have. <laughs> well, guys, uh, that's it for scams. <laughs> Say goodbye, uh, all the scammers. Don't worry, YouTube doesn't want you on their platform. That's clearly gonna do something. Guys, there's never been more crypto scams, influencer scams out there than now. I literally don't have time for it. But YouTube's coming in here and saying, don't worry, guys, we'll find the scams. Like, no, you won't. Continuously, people find new scams getting through and clearly they let scams through because some of the biggest influencers on their platform did it just a few months ago so this idea is so condescending big sigh scams are not allowed on youtube well i don't know what to say scams are thriving more than ever uh, that's hate to tell you that youtube and again not to make this all about like scams or what i do i, I think it's bad sort of across the board but scams are an example of like legit bad behavior that you want creators to face account accountability for. And clearly YouTube is trying to make it so that no one ever has to face any accountability or any dislikes. Already creators have the ability to like, not only turn off comments, but now they can, um, and this has sort of been the case for a while, they can hide certain comments they like, they just remove them. And YouTube has made the comment algorithm more and more hiding and suppressing negative comments and bringing, bringing up all the positive ones. So. More and more, the comment section is a giant circle jerk anyway. The dislike button was like the last bastion of like, well, if you had it on, there's no way to fake it. It just is what it is. You can't hide it. You can't remove dislikes the way you can comments. Um, and so I think you're going to see more and more creators just sort of getting away with bad behavior and there's nothing anyone could do to stop them. But don't worry, guys. It's all for your safety, your protection. YouTube is here to help you out. I can't imagine something less popular that YouTube is more sure about with their crack team of researchers. I think it's um, completely insane. I, I hope they reverse this decision and realize that creators who are suffering from this, A, may have done something bad, right? That's one. But B, if it's just because they have an unpopular opinion or whatever, and you want to include that on your platform, I think that's totally legitimate. Just let them hide the dislike button themselves. This was not a problem that needed a solution. We already had a solution. And YouTube's answer is, well, they got shamed for it. If that's the case, we're removing things that people get shamed for. You also have to remove comments because comments 
also have a thing where if someone disables comments, they also get hate for that. So the way I see this, this was a solution for no one and just sort of makes the community less social, less interesting, less informative, frankly. Now it's more like watching a Netflix video, but um, I'm sure that's what YouTube wants because it brings in more advertisers, more bucks for the big guys upstairs. Hopefully they change their mind, but given YouTube's sort of history with this and the fact they told us a long time ago, everyone hated it and they still did it. I don't think that's gonna change. All right, well, pump the stock guys because you can't do anything else. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Damn, okay, getting by and I ain't got no bands, okay Try your best that you won't understand, okay You can't relate, this part of the story that you pan away I, I don't got a penny in my debit card I swear if I want it then I'ma get it It's like, but things will be different if I was balling